Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today we'll talk about diagnosing the most common EUC problems. So let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. Yes, indeed, I have new glasses. Get used to it. Anyways, in this video, we will talk about these most common issues that EUCs are facing. Not necessarily what to do about them because some issues are like more complicated and then you will need to um, send the wheel to a service. But I will tell you how to even recognize that something is wrong because you might be riding your EUC not knowing that your pedal is broken or not knowing when you need to do a tire change or other issues, pain, fatigue when riding, and noises, clonks, grinds. So in this video we will cover that. And I will cover those issues in separate categories, including, wait I have a list here. First, issues with the tire, then suspension, mechanical damage, stuff happening with the motor, then issues with the battery, and at the end, fatigue when riding. Fatigue when riding isn't really like the EUC's fault, but there are certain things that you can do to the EUC to alleviate pain when riding, because that's a question I get asked a lot too. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Starting with tires. And my first point here is tire alignment. What is even tire alignment? Well, if you get a EUC, even from factory, you might, might start riding on it and you have like a bounce on it. And you can especially feel it when you are on a super straight road, you know it's flat, you know there is no bumps, but still you have this constant up and down on the EUC. And usually this means that you don't have the tire properly aligned. And how can you do that? Well, first of all, you need to lay the EUC on the side and spin the wheel, see if the tire moves front and back. And then you can also see on the side of the tire, usually there is a small um, line. And if this line gets closer and further from the rim, then it means that your tire isn't properly aligned. What you need to do then is to deflate the tire and sort of massage uh, the tire into place. So both when you spin the wheel and look top down on the tire, it doesn't move back and forth. And also this line on the side stays and uh, in the same distance when you look at the tire spinning. And, and then if you have it properly aligned, uh, you need to pump up the tire to, I don't know, 45, even 50 PSI, see if it stays in place and then deflate it to the pressure you usually ride in. Now there are tires which fit better, which fit worse into different EUC models, usually on the veteran Sherman, on the Kingsong S22, usually on electric unicycles with wider rims, the motorcycle tires will fit better. Uh, but this, for example, the City Pro also fits very well here on my Masters. But tire alignment is important and it's not only the comfort of you, sometimes the tire might also pop out because it's just so misaligned. So that's tire alignment for you. Another question I get asked a lot is what tire pressure should I use? And here your mileage may vary. Usually the lower your tire pressure, the less wobbles you will have, the more comfort, the more sort of suspension the tire will give you, but also the higher the chance that you will bend your rim when you hit a pothole or when you hit a curb more strongly. With higher pressure, and I made a whole separate video about that, so I'll keep it really short, um, you'll have more agility, probably more wobbles, and more feedback from the tire when riding. Typically for my weight, I'm around 80 kilograms so with gear. Uh, on the Sherman with the City Pro, I ride at around 28 PSI, which is pretty low, but I don't try to make any sort of um, bigger jumps on it. I don't try to like pop from curbs. And for example, here on a Hero with the street tire, because it has suspension, uh, I have around 45 PSI. And usually for doing tricks, uh, doing some uh, more interesting stuff, pirouettes, whatever, having also a narrower tire, um, I have around 45 PSI, 40 to 45. The heavier you are, the more pressure you will need. So if you're a heavier rider over 90, over 100 kilograms, then you will need to ride at this 45 PSI or even sometimes higher. But I won't get too much in depth with the tire pressure. As said, I made a whole video about it. Let's get into the next point in tires. All right, but how often do I even need to change a tire? And here your mileage may vary too, because different compounds and different brands have a 
different lifespans. So it's the best to just look at the tire thread and look how much thread you have left. Ah. Hmm. On electric unicycles and probably just like on any other vehicle, the middle of the tire gets worn down the most. So if you still have tread on the side, but you don't have in the middle, that means you need to change a tire. For example, on the CST 5188, I need to change it probably at around two or 3000 kilometers with a Michelin or this Kenda 262, maybe even eight or 10,000 kilometers is possible. The Kenda that you see on the picture now, which I could still use for a bit, has around 8,000 kilometers on the odometer. It doesn't have an od odometer really, but was written for around 8,000 kilometers. For me, it's actually nicer when you wear down the tire a little because you can uh, sort of take turns sharper uh, because it's more like of a slick tire. No, <laughs> no. And it has a flat. And it has a flatter profile, but please be very careful or even don't ride it. Don't ride the wheel then in rain because you might slip so much easier on sand, on wet asphalt, off-road. So yeah, change your tires once your thread gets worn out. I know it sounds simple, but it's important to check your thread every once in a while. And then if you want to actually change your tire, it is possible to do it by yourself. Usually manufacturers just make videos to show you how to do it. If it's too much for a hassle for you, just ask a more experienced friend maybe, or a repair workshop or service. You also need to mount the tire in the right direction. And here there is a trick because motorcycle tires sometimes are designed to be either in the front or in the back and the front tire will have the pattern the opposite way to the rear tire and here don't uh, don't even look at the direction which is uh, printed on a tire just look from the front of the EUC the pattern has to go up when looking from the uh, front of the EUC like here on this uh, Michelin um, City Pro or even like here on this big old hero. All right, now let's talk about suspension like we have here on the big old master. And most of the time you sees nowadays have suspension, have, have air suspension, have an air shock. V11 S18 master hero, just the S22 now has a mechanical shock. So on the S22, you don't need to care about air at all. Uh, nevertheless, um, companies give us some sort of, you know, um, spreadsheets to onto what pressure to choose. Generally, the heavier you are, the more pressure you will need, the more jumps you want to do. If you just don't want to bottom out the suspension constantly and you shouldn't, then you ha should have a higher pressure. However, if you are just really riding chill, um, not you know, doing any sort of crazy stuff, you want to more have more comfort, you can try a bit of a lower pre pressure. I know it's pretty self-explanatory, but I encourage you to just like try riding on different pressures and then maybe you will feel more, more comfortable on your EUC. Furthermore, an important thing, uh, which is not really talked about that much on EUCs, is that air suspension doesn't work that well in very cold weather. So if the temperatures go at around zero or even below, those air shocks might not be able to hold the air in so you will need to pump them up way more often and you will have just a bit more of a hard time using the suspension without bottoming out in the winter so this is really cool for example with the s22 if you live in finland sweden i know canada or even colder countries then swapping the air shock for a mechanical shock or like an oil oil damper or just getting the s22 might be a good idea because probably you might have a bit of a hard time with those air shocks and that's something totally normal compared to this drill bikes have the same issues all right let's get into the next point all right, so now let's talk about mechanical damage. And this might happen after a you know bigger amount of kilometers, miles that you put on the wheel, or maybe after a harder crash. So first up, a problem that sometimes occurs on EUCs that is that they start vibrating. And I don't mean like just very slightly, just they start shaking. And there might be several reasons for that. First up, there might be some screws loose inside of the EUC, most likely the motherboard mounting screws.
So if you tighten those, usually the problem can fade away, particularly on the 16X, for example. Uh, but there might be also another reason. If you ride the EUC and you feel like there is a knock where you start to brake or to accelerate, uh, and sometimes at a certain position, if you are standing on the wheel, um, you know, just on one foot, uh, you, you're just about to start or you're just chilling, and then it starts vibrating, this means that probably the axle nuts are loose and those need tightening. Uh, sometimes there might be also you know problems with axles, but uh, I, I think that those motherboard screws and those axle nuts in motors that don't have a hollow motor mount are the most common issues. You can try to fix it by yourself, but usually it requires some special tools. But if you want to have it working, you see you need to tighten those bolts. Other mechanical damage might of course include plastics on the outside and you, you need to check on those because then water might come inside what she said but maybe even more problematic of a damage is the damage on the inside and particularly around the L hangers there are screws and on pretty much every single EUC the shell of the wheel is just held on with plastic and a screw and those areas around the L hangers can break so every once in a while maybe every 1000 kilometers 500 kilometers or maybe after a, a more intense crash open the wheel up on the side, usually it's just a set of screws taking off the pedals uh, and then you can see if there is no damage on the inside. Yes, you might get water damage if there is um, too many cracks on the inside or just the shell might not hold on too well to the wheel. And while you're also checking the shell of the wheel, it's also important to check the pedals and particularly on in-motion wheels, just lift up the um, gel insert or check around the pedal if there aren't any cracks because those pedals tend to crack. So every once in a while, especially after a harder fall or bigger mileage, also check your pedals. They're made of aluminium. Once they break, they will not bend, they will break. So now let's get into the motor and probably the most common issue that you will hear, uh, particularly in hollow bore motor uh, wheels is bearing issues. So. How to find out if your bearings are busted? Well, it's pretty easy. You just lift up the EUC and then you do a free spin and hear if there's any clonking noise, if there's any clicking noise. Or if you're riding, if you feel like, especially if you ride like next to a wall, if you hear some sort of additional, uh, I don't know, like noise, um, or if there's like some sort of clicking that comes every every time the wheel makes a full spin, then probably you, your bearings are busted and you need to change them. The bearings, they're done. The motor also might make a grinding noise. And don't worry, this is completely normal. And especially at lower speeds, high speed motors, C30s on big odes, um, or you know, also other EUCs might make this grinding noise, especially when you start. So don't worry, this is absolutely normal. This is just uh, the noise that EUCs make, BLDC motors make, if you accelerate a bit harder, especially at lower speeds, if you need to use more torque. After you do a tire change, it's also really important actually before you do the tire change to make pictures of the phase wires getting into the motherboard because if you connect them in a the wrong way yes wrong way uh, then when you turn on the EUC it will freak out or like it will just vibrate like crazy and you might even burn your motherboard then so um, just be careful when 
doing the tire change to make sure that the wires are in the correct order. And also regarding the tire change, some wheels um, do have a directional rim. So you have the rim, the rotor and the sta stator in, in the middle. And for example, on the veteran Sherman, the magnets are tilted towards one side because on the other side, there are the hull sensors. So if you put in the rim the wrong way, again, wrong way, uh, when riding, you might get a cutoff. So just keep that in mind. That's a mistake that might happen when changing an EUC tire. Anyways, let's get into the battery. Now, batteries on EUCs are quite big and the energy that is in here is sometimes even scaring me. So it's really important to take care and notice issues in batteries quickly because yes, it's very hazardous if something wrong happens with those wheels, particularly on the LG packs of um, big old wheels. But all right, um, first thing I want to talk about here is not charging to 100%. And this might happen in any EUC brand. If your wheel doesn't charge to 100%, especially like three volts less or even six, nine volts less, uh, then it means that one set of batteries is busted. And it's really important then to just bring it to a repair shop. Like if you're a certified professional, then yes, you can work on it, but probably some cells are busted in, in the EUC and it's really, really dangerous to A, ride on it then, don't do it ever. Don't ride on EUC if it doesn't charge to 100%. Just leave it be, let a service take care of it. Don't ride it, don't charge it. One thing that you can do is to, you know, take out the battery pack, check the voltage, which one of the packs uh, is broken. Um, probably you won't be able to see it because they will have the same voltage anyways. But yeah, it, it's highly dangerous. And especially if you have a longer mileage you see, if you really ride hardcore all the time, or even maybe out of factory, there might be broken cells in the EUC. Don't ride it, don't charge it get it fixed by a professional. But if the battery also doesn't charge to 100%, it might be also the issue of a charger. Also, you can ch check your charger by putting a, a multimeter into it to see if your charger actually can charge to uh, the maximum voltage that is on the wheel. For example, 84 volts on you know 84 volt wheels and 100 volts, 100.8 on 100 volt wheels. All right, so these are my quick fixes for the battery. You might also, you know, just take the battery out, see if there's like any mechanical damage or anything burnt. Uh, this might be also visible, but that's pretty much it for my quick diagnosis, quick fixes for the battery. Now let's talk about fatigue when riding. All right, so there might be several issues that lead to pain when riding and fatigue. Particularly if you are a newer rider, then you might have just more pain when riding. You just use more muscles that you didn't use before. But I'll talk about the most common things or like the most quick fixes that I found when riding EUC to make your ride just less painful, to have less fatigue. First up, let's talk about the pain in your foot. And I found that particularly on wheels that have bad grip tape, AKA older big old wheels, but also in motion. Um, just the fact that you slip off the wheel might cause your foot to be more in pain. It needs to just work more to stay on the EUC. So getting no Nova pedals or just changing your grip tape to something better, getting like a 3D insert by EUC Clubhouse might solve this issue here. Furthermore, you can try different foot positioning. So if you're more like in front of the pedal then it will be easier to accelerate, it will be easier to keep the speed. If you're more in the back of the pedal, it will be easier to brake. But I found myself that being more in the back of the pedal creates more fatigue, but particularly in my calves, but also in my feet. You can also try to change the foot plate angle if it's possible on your EUC. For me, a bigger angle gives me more comfort, more safety. Um, and if I have a very flat angle, particularly for example on the Emotion V10, on the V8, um, this might create some fatigue. So getting different pedals, trying to put something underneath the pedal, a sheet of metal to make them more angled might solve the issue here. Next up, let's talk about the pain and calf. So here. Um, <laughs> here, mostly I think the feet positioning does the biggest difference if your foot is in the front of the pedal or in the back. Um, but you can also try power pads because with power pads you can accelerate better. You don't need to you know, hold the EUC that tightly. 
and yeah just try also to position them more into the front more into the back see what works for you because you know sometimes for me if I have the power pads too far in the back I also get pain so it's very normal if you put them more into the front then maybe the pain in the calves will go away but that will be a bit more difficult to break so it's always you know a somewhat of a compromise Next up, you might notice that your EUC might turn a bit more different to one side than to the other, and that's also common. Now, you can't fix it on a Sherman because it comes calibrated out of the factory, but on the good wheels in motion, King Song, you can just calibrate the wheel. Um, typically, I just put it right beneath my legs and I see top down if it's straight. And then if I, you know, just ride a couple meters, if I feel that on the one side it behaves differently than to the other, then I try to calibrate it again. Usually I can like calibrate it even like three, four times before it just gets right. It's important to do every once in a while. Sometimes just wheels get miscalibrated after a while. Not on a Sherman, somehow it holds its calibration, but uh, King Song's Emotions and Gotways. So you can also just stand in on one leg when you're stationary and turn the EUC sort of 90 degrees and see if it does anything then. If it does, then yes, you need to calibrate it again if the foot plates go up when you turn around. But if it stays in the same position, then your calibration is okay. And another thing that might alleviate your pain is just the modes on EUC. So usually I just ride in hard mode on all EUCs, but if I want to chill a bit more, if I want to go off-road, sometimes I put on medium or soft mode and this is also a more comfy mode in general when it comes to street riding, when it comes to general riding. So it's easier to overpower then, but I, I, I am sure that a lot of you are also fans of the soft mode and medium mode. So just try to, you know, play around with modes. I made a whole separate video about that um, to alleviate your pain. All right, so these are my quick hot fixes, hot diagnosis when it comes to problems with EUCs. Let me know if any of that uh, was of any help to you, if you could recognize your problem or if you could, you know, just find out that something's wrong with your EUC. So if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.